Good morning, everybody. Long time no see. Sorry about that, but I'm not very quick about making uh, <clears throat> new videos. And I want to go ahead and ask for your forgiveness today. Let me do a lot of be doing a lot of throat clearing and probably sniffling. I'm not sick. Uh, I just have horrible allergies, and uh, it's that time of year where it flares up for whatever reason. <clears throat> so today. Today we're gonna go check out Carmel's uh, Main Street. Not all of Main Street, but uh, just a particular section that kind of got a revamp uh, last year, or 2022, 2023. It's in front of a school, and then uh, there's also a library there. Uh, so we're gonna check out the road redesign and do a little bit i gonna check my map, do a little bit of uh, critiquing of that, and um, go by the library. I'm distracted by so many things. There's a big FedEx airplane up there. I love airplanes. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, we're gonna go by the library, and I wanna show you kinda like some bike parking that they have there, and. The outside of the library, it's its really nice. So here we're coming up to it, out of this neighborhood. And you can see here, it's a new roundabout. Stop here and peek at it. It's not bad as far as design goes. At least it's single lane here. I would still like to see the, the crosswalks narrowed a little bit more. The, the lanes, I don't know what size they are, but they're definitely up to the American standards to accommodate the mass of vehicles. <clears throat> but everybody Seems to drive through here at a pretty pleasant rate, anyway. So now, let's just face the camera forward and um, check it out, talk about it. So this side is really nice, actually. Uh, we might go to the other side and look at that. <laughs> but this side has a nice little green strip for separation, which is a very important design detail. <clears throat> you don't want to have curb-backed sidewalks. Uh, they're just dangerous, hostile, places you don't want to be. <sighs> now, <laughs> we get a lot of deviations like this. Now, this is a really good one. Let's stop and talk about this. So, I don't know what this is. I guess it doesn't matter. So we got a building over here with a parking lot. Oh, the Carmel Life and Learning Center. Okay. So people can start to come up here and exit, but if the road began just on this side of the crosswalk, you would have people stopped inside the crosswalk all the time. Crosswalk, bike lane, multi-use path, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> blocking, uh, the obstruct uh, blocking the path for people to walk and bike. Instead, they can queue back here behind the line and then for each person that is ready to go one car can advance up into here and still wait for their chance to go and see really well down uh, that way without blocking this and then as soon as this person goes as soon as it's safe over here this person can cross the crossing advance up to here, sit and wait. So they did a really good job with that and that's why this setback is extra important um, to reduce conflict for everybody. People walking on bikes, um, people in cars, everything. 
So good design detail, good job. Uh, good job, everybody. Oh my God, whatever is rattling here is driving me crazy. Once again, they did it here too, so that's good. And now we're coming up on the library. I guess we're gonna check that out before we go to the other side. Well, I guess we can't go to the other side because they got they got it closed. Looks like they're re redoing brick over there, so they got the sidewalk uh, roped off. Anyway, that side over there where the school is, it's not as good. Um, it's just your traditional um, narrow sidewalk. It's not like a big wide path like this one. So I hope they have plans to redo that and make it better. It's, it needs to mirror, mimic what's over here, <clears throat> especially because this is a school right there. So kids are walking, riding their bikes. Um, they need a big path. So Carmel, I hope you're gonna redo the whole thing, but I don't have faith in you to actually do that. Otherwise you would have done it whenever you redid this road. And another thing to note on this road is <clears throat> um, it's, it's got uh, the road diet feature to it. So the, the green strip in the middle raised and divided, but it's still four lanes through here and I don't love that design, but so far people are pretty calm when they drive. So, whatever. Anyway, here's the library. Let's go check it out. Uh, the library is pretty new. Uh, I think it opened last year or this year. It's, a, it's amazing inside. I wish I could take you in. It's really beautiful. Um, and I'm going to start coming here a lot, actually, to use it as a study space. Yeah, I can't emphasize enough how beautiful it is inside. If I don't know what's available online, but <clears throat> you might be able to pull up interior media just by Googling the Carmel, Indiana Public Library. So, let's kind of look at it from out here. Library. You got a really nice entrance here, overhang up top, and down there we got some bike parking. Let's go check out the bike parking, at least the upfront bike parking. <clears throat> so right here's a bike parking, and there's a coffee shop right there. get turned around. Kind of see here. So yes, on the on the left here is a Java House coffee shop. Some bike parking. Got some people going in. Now the only my only uh, critique of this is now <clears throat> this bike parking's nice. It does have nice stands. It doesn't have exposed bolts, so nobody could undo the bolts on the stands and mess with them that way. Um, but it's out here and it's exposed. I don't know if you can see yeah, the overhang up there, but uh, that overhang provides some shelter. So, we could have put bike parking over there up along the wall because it really wouldn't conflict with people walking since that's such a big area. Uh, but that would have given some shelter <clears throat> if it's raining or snowing to people who rode their bikes here. And uh, yeah, you can ride your bike in rain and snow. It's, it's not that difficult. <laughs> um, so yeah, they could still do that though. I mean, we can leave these racks here, the more parking the better, but I would encourage the administration to add some racks <clears throat> up there um, so that there's some shelter. Okay, 
So I'm gonna turn the camera forward again so we can go around to the other side and look at more bike parking. We'll chill out here so we don't conflict with those people walking. Here's another roundabout. Everybody likes roundabouts, right? Take a look at the side of the place, if the sun doesn't blind the camera. Really nice green space out here. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I'm sure there's stuff in there for pollinators and other insects and birds and stuff. So, that big obstruction over there is the car parking garage. We'll go look at that. <clears throat> but there's also more more bike parking here. Okay. So, here's the rear entrance. And we got, again, those really nice racks. Um, plenty of spaces for bike parking. Normally I roll up here and I see five or six bikes parked here. There's the entrance to go in the door, uh, the rear door. And then also there's this <clears throat> area to return things. So you don't even have to go in or you can do it after hours. There's a drop slot there. And some automated return machine here. So now let's go check out the parking garage because I heard that there's bike parking in there. Friend in town. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Told me that there's some in here, although I don't know where it is. So. Speed bump. Ugh. Let's see if we can find it. Ah, oh, it looks like it's over here. Cool. Of course, they put a bunch of handicap parking right in front of it, which obstructs. Obstructs the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it obstructs the, the, the in and out, whatever, accessibility. There we go. So yeah, the, all this here they have for handicap parking and they should have removed at least one of these spaces and maybe a bollard to make it easier to get in and out of here. <clears throat> I mean, if this is ever filled to, compa to capacity, it's going to be pretty tight, especially with the amount of cargo bikes that's starting to come to Carmel. But hey, whatever. It's good. So, all right, we got some sheltered parking here. So when it's raining or snowing, uh, this is a good place to park. Just tightly squeeze through here. And it looks like we got a fix it station here. I don't, I've never used one of these. I don't even really know how they work, but the kid is loud. But yeah, fix-it station, lighting, uh, that's an important feature, obviously. I, you see so many of these parking garages, and if they have bike parking, it's in this dusty, dark area. So, really nice that they have the lights here. And the hoop racks, not horrible. I'm not a huge fan of hoops. I kind of just like the more traditional staple design, but oh, it's still very utilitarian, very good. The spacing's not bad, spacing's important. Uh, but it does have exposed bolts, so it doesn't look like that there, there's an easy fix for that with this design. But not a lot of crime here in Carmel, so I'm not too worried about exposed bolts on racks. 
Oh yeah, so as you know, we're in the garage. That's how you get to the library. It looks like we got a holds pickup locker for library materials, trash can, and see some water fountains up there. I bet those water fountains require some serious cleaning. Um, right then, I gotta figure out how to get out of here. <clears throat> Again, sorry for all the sniffing and throat clearing. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like it's been kind of chilly lately, so we've kicked on our heat uh, a little bit, and it's forced air heating. It's not um, probably the type of heating that some of you around the world are used to. So I think kicking on the heater kind of stirs up some dust, and I think that's what's inflaming my allergies. See if there's anything else to look at around here. There's a school, another school here. This is an excellent um, location for a library. Sandwiched in between two schools. And I've only been here a few times, like three or four times, but I see a lot of uh, especially a lot of the teenagers, because I think that's a high school over on the other side. I see them utilizing the library a lot for study groups or individual study. Uh, the other day I saw uh, four teenagers sitting at a table just playing a board game quietly. It was nice. It's good to see that it's being utilized. Where, where I grew up in my small town, we have a nice library per se it's I think it's like a hundred years old or more it's absolutely nothing like like this here in Carmel um, but yeah so there wasn't as many resources for me to utilize growing up other than books just plain books but yeah this place is great <clears throat> so let's stop here so we're done at the library. We're done taking a peek at the, the revision with the road diet right in front of the school there. Again, I like the roundabouts. They're pretty nice, they're pretty tight. The radius on them is good to slow traffic. I just still have mixed feelings about the four lanes <clears throat> that move through there. But again, from what I've observed, um, Motorists are pretty calm going through there, so. And we talked about the separated multi-use path, how that works really well for other places where there's traffic coming in and out. Uh, yeah, we talked about that, so cool. <clears throat> so now we're gonna go on, continue on Carmel's Main Street. Uh, if you see there, they call it the Carmel Art, Arts and Design District. So this runs to downtown, um, and connects to the Rails to Trails, Monon Boulevard. Boy, everybody's just staring at me as they drive by. I guess it's the Bachfeet's cargo bike and maybe the massive tripod here, but. <laughs> um, so in my opinion, Main Street and Carmel is a, I hate to say this, a, a disappointment. It's a, kind of a failure. <laughs> Uh, because their design is not good, and actually we can see right here why I say that. So it just turns into an old style uh, sidewalk, and it's not a smooth one. Um, the sidewalks can barely accommodate two people walking side by side, let alone people needing to ride their bikes or use a motorized scooter, or wheelchair, or anything else. And um, the whole street is lined with street parking. So, I mean, there's plenty of surface lots. And there, as you get downtown, there's parking garages that we pay for that are providing free parking. Uh, but still, Carmel seems to prioritize street parking. And I don't understand that because if we took away some of the street parking, we could put in some protected uh, mobility lanes for people. Um, yeah. 
the money's there. They're just <laughs> using it elsewhere for different things, but we can make Main Street better. So let's just go down it. We're just gonna take the lane and we're gonna stop so I can point out a coffee shop along the way that I go to occasionally. So yeah, we're just gonna take the lane. We don't have to go far because the coffee shop is right here on the right. called Indie Coffee Roasters. All right, so here it is. You can see it's got like uh, this house design, which is great. It's right here in the neighborhood. And back there is just a small parking lot for like, I don't know, four or five cars. Um, Got some bike parking right here. Let me push the bike up the sidewalk here. Sidewalk again. See, uh, we got all these cars parked along here, street parking everywhere, but then people just get this tiny bumpy sidewalk. This should absolutely be a big wide multi-use path, but it's not. Carmel, make your main street better. Make it for people, not just motorists. So anyway, Indie Coffee Roasters, the inside's nice. Um, well, I take that back. The inside's okay, it's very sterilized. It's very black and white. There's nothing cozy about it. You know how people like cozy coffee shops. The interior is very dull. It's very, in my opinion, depressed. <laughs> But yeah, it's just very sterilized. It, I wish they would make it more cozy. Um, anyway, there's outdoor seating up here and it's normally utilized a lot, but it's kind of chilly out today. So I think everybody's inside. Um, bike parking right here. The placement is not that good. At least the racks are the upside down staples. Um, but the placement's not good. You can't park up cargo bike there without there's a person on a bike you can't park a cargo bike there without it sticking out into the sidewalk and obstructing movement so like when I park the urban arrow here I just park right here in the grass and lock the rear wheel so it could work like if they took out that bush area kind of leveled that off could make better parking there <clears throat> And if they wanted to make it amazing, they could put like a green roof over it, you know? A uh, green roof with, uh, well, there's, there's plans out there for green roofs. If you Google those things, they're really neat. The Netherlands has some amazing uh, outdoor bike parking with uh, a roof covering where it's green on top, living, you know? To help the pollinators and absorb the heat and the rain and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, I've been here before, like I was here, I don't know, a month ago sitting outside and in the half hour I was here, I think I saw one person drive here and maybe 30, 40 people walk here. So it's clear that American neighborhoods need more businesses <clears throat> sprinkled within where people live, not just putting them in commercial districts, you know? So imagine if this was a cafe or a bakery or something else that people use on a daily basis. We need more of these in neighborhoods with almost no parking added, right? Because you would get crazy foot traffic, crazy bike traffic. Um, yeah. So see, we're gonna take the lane again because who wants to ride their bike on this tight sidewalk and then have a conflict with somebody walking or whatever else? Again, Carmel needs to fix this. <laughs> They've got plenty of room to let people park their private property you know, right on our main street, but uh, people walking and biking get this small sliver and that's not right. I don't think they have any plans to change that in the near future. All right, anyway, I just got in somebody's way. Okay. So we're 
we're gonna advance on to downtown. Let me face the camera forward so you can see that. We've got uh, restaurants over here. We've got a restaurant on the right. We've got bike share coming up on the left. I think they're building more apartments here on the right. Outdoor dining space on the left that, you know, competes for space. At least, at least that's not car parking. So again, here we are in the heart of downtown and people biking, whether it's children, women, people with reduced mobility, or even just plain old me, we got to ride out here in the street with cars and that's not right. And like, you look at this bike parking here, look how cramped it is. That's not useful. That's not utilitarian. That's, that's an afterthought, really. Oh, man, that bike parking, too. I'd like to go back and talk about that. So we're coming up on Monon Boulevard. There's a bunch of uh, bike share on the left. People really use those, too. I see a lot of people using that Carmel bike share. And now we're on Monon Boulevard. Unfortunately, I think that Carmel skirts a lot on the on the uh, tails of the Monon Boulevard design, and they tend to slack off um, in other areas of their mobility network. You know, for example, they consider those thin little sidewalks uh, to be bike paths and they count that towards their their uh, running total of supposed bike paths but they're not Monon Boulevard and uh, Oh, I figured out what's making that noise. Oh yeah, go ahead, you entitled bastard. Gosh, it's this uh, thing that was making that dinging noise, which maybe I'm the only one hearing it, was this thing on my cup holder. <laughs> and it was like rattling back and forth and dinging against my water bottle. So we're gonna ride just a little bit more and then wrap this up. We're just gonna ride down to where Carmel's setting up their Christmas market already. Of course, it's understandable that they're working on setting it up already because it's a major production. It's a big thing, it takes a lot of work. I think it's, it was voted one of the best, one of the best domestic Christmas markets here in the U.S. Uh, and it really is amazing. If, if I think about it when I'm making this video, I'll try to put a link to a video that shows it. And if I do, I'll put it right here. And if I don't, then I just point it up for nothing, so. <laughs> okay, Let me face the camera forward. because we're gonna go through a tunnel up here. And I think it's neat for you to see the tunnel. Tunnel. A lot of stuff happening here. This whole section just got redone over the last year and yeah, they took an entire year to do it. So over here you see that they're starting to set up the Christmas market. That's what all these brown buildings are that they truck in. Uh, I don't really want to get in anybody's way, so. Okay. 
Yeah, you can see here they're setting up the village. And over on the other side, which maybe you can't see, is the ice skating rink they're putting up. And all that noise over here is, uh, I guess, apartments. Oh, here comes some people on bikes. Oh, they got e-bikes too. Do you? Well, you're going to be on one. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> All right, man, thanks. Well, that's cool. I think that's the first time I've ever been recognized out in public. It's probably a good thing. Don't want too many people knowing who I am and what I look like because I I think I sometimes make enemies rather than friends with the way I critique Carmel's infrastructure, but <laughs> I think the, I think those people that aren't too happy with me are in City Hall and not just out riding their bikes uh, with their family and everything. So I do my constructive criticism because I want to make this place better. And there's a lot to learn and a lot to do. More of this housing's going up, or getting finished, should I say. I've been coming by here a lot in some videos, and it's really coming together. Must be really nice to live right along this trail, although I bet it's super expensive. So we're gonna stop right here in the shade, actually. We're gotta get out of the way. Over on the side. Now back up to the shade. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the ride on Main Street and uh, just checking out some design details. And to the people that just I just saw back there that said they watched the YouTube videos, thank you. Um, I get people who watch these things all over the world. Uh, in the Netherlands, in uh, Great Britain, and here in Carmel too. And it, it's great no matter where you are, if you're watching and you get some enjoyment out of this, it means a lot to me, especially because it takes a bit of work and time to put these together. Um, and I am really glad though that uh, some local people are uh, watching them and enjoying them. So thank you. Thank you to everybody. So uh, till next time, I do have some plans to make some more uh, videos this fall before winter sets in. I would like to be able to go over to my hometown uh, over in Illinois. It's a very small town, just like 4,000 people. And I just want to ride around there. I don't know, show it to you. It's nothing spectacular, nothing overly interesting, but uh, maybe some of you might like it. So um, that's on my list of things to do. I just need to rent a minivan, fold all the seats into the floor, throw this big cargo bike in the back and drive over there. It's just two and a half hours, uh, free room and board at mom's house. So, okay, everybody, hope you have a great day, great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.